In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Today we are celebrating Monday of the last week of ordinary time, last week of the church calendar. And as we gather in God's presence, let us be mindful of our sins and ask for God's forgiveness and healing. Lord Jesus, he healed a contrite, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. Christ Jesus, he came to call sinners, Christ have mercy, Christ have mercy. Lord Jesus, you plead for us at the right hand of the Father, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Stir up the will of your faithful, we pray, O Lord, that striving more eagerly to bring your divine work to fruitful completion, they may receive in greater measure the healing remedies your kindness bestows. We ask this to our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Revelation. I, John, looked, and there was a lamb standing on the Mount Zion, and with him a hundred and forty-four thousand, who had his name and his father's name written on their foreheads. I heard a sound from heaven, like the sound of rushing water or a loud peal of thunder. The sound I heard was like that of harpists playing their harps. There were, they were singing, and what seemed to be a new hymn before the throne, before the four living creatures and the elders. No one could learn this hymn except the 144,000 who had been ransomed from the earth. These are the ones who follow the Lamb wherever he goes. They have been ransomed as the firstfruits of the human race for God and the Lamb. On their lips, no deceit has been found. They are unblemished. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord, this is the people that longs to see your face. The Lord's are the earth and its fullness, the world and those who dwell in it. For he founded it upon the seas and established it upon the rivers. Lord, this is the people that longs to see your face. Who can ascend the mountain of the Lord? or who may stand in his holy place. He whose hands are sinless, whose heart is clean, who desires not what is vain. Lord, this is the people that longs to see your face. He shall receive a blessing from the Lord, a reward from God his Savior. Such is the race that seeks for him, that seeks the face of God of Jacob. Lord, this is the people that longs to see your face. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. When Jesus looked up, he saw some wealthy people putting their offerings into the treasury, and he noticed a poor widow putting in two small coins. He said, I tell you truly, this poor widow put in more than all the rest. For those others have, made, have all made offerings from their surplus wealth, but she, from her poverty, has offered her whole livelihood. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus does not deny that the wealthy people have contributed far more money to the offertory than this poor widow. But what he does acknowledge is the fact that her gift is complete, a totality of everything that she has. And it is that quality of completeness, not holding anything back from God, that spells something very significant and important about how she responds in her relationship with God. So God really does not expect a lot from us. He knows what our capacity is. So he's not expecting a lot. But what he is expecting is everything that we've got. So it's not about quantity, it's about quality. There needs to be a totality, a completeness 
to our commitment to God. When you hold things back, God can't, can't, cannot transform it, can't um, turn it into our benefit. So when God is asking for something from us, asking everything from us, it's not so to strip everything away from us, but rather for him to take our meager contribution, and if it's in our totality, God responds with an abundance from his side of the equation. We see this in the miracle when there's thousands of people hungry. Jesus asks his apostles to fess up. What do they got? Five loaves and two fish are all that we've got. Jesus doesn't say, well, bring me half. Keep a couple of, keep a fish for yourself. Keep a loaf of bread. Bring it here to me. And it is in the completeness of this very meager offering that Jesus performs a miracle and feeds the crowd abundantly. And so the same is true for our relationship with God. If we bring our total hearts into our relationship with God, the repayment is with the totality of God. All that God has to offer becomes part of the package. So it's one of those deals where it doesn't need to be a lot, it just needs to be everything. It's a paradox. I know it's not a lot, but that's all I've got. With confidence, we now bring our needs, however large or small, to our loving God. For church leaders, may the Holy Spirit continue to strengthen them in shepherding their flocks, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For leaders throughout the world, May God bless their efforts to end hatred and violence, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For those facing persecution for the sake of righteousness, may the Father grant them strength and comfort, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For a faith community, may the love of Christ help us to sow seeds that bear much fruit, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For Anne and Ken Adams, for whom this Mass is offered, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we ask that you graciously hear these prayers we bring before you in the name of Jesus, your Son. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. For through your goodness we receive this bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. For through your goodness we receive this wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of his holy church. Accept, O Lord, the sacred offerings, which at your bidding we dedicate to your name, and in order that through these gifts we may become worthy of your love, grant us unfailing obedience to your commands through Christ our Lord, amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts, we lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God, it is right and just. 
It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For by his birth, he brought renewal to humanity's fallen state, and by his suffering canceled at our sins. By his rising from the dead, he has opened the way to eternal life, and by ascending to you, O Father, has unlocked the gates of heaven. And so with all the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end, we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which should be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Lawrence, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and we praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but in the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who lives and reigns forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always and with your spirit. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. We pray, Almighty God, that those to whom you give the joy of participating in divine mysteries may never be parted from you through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. This Mass is ended. Let us go in peace. Thanks be to God.